We're here with Tracy Fullerton, and we're talking about DML 2012. Tracy, I know that, that your theme uh, concentration area for the conference is reimagining media for learning. So That's right. why don't we start by talking about what that means? Well, I think um, when we when we imagine using media for learning, um, uh, you know, we've gone through a number of phases of of uh, imagining that um, that combination, and uh, often we think about using media to scale existing uh, methods for teaching and for learning. Uh, and I think often we're really disappointed with the outcomes uh, because when you uh, use these various uh, forms of media, and particularly the ones that we're dealing with today, things like games and uh, uh, mobile technologies, social networks, um, you're bound to be disappointed um, with the outcome when you're trying to uh, scale an existing form of education. I think what um, you know our challenge today is to do is to uh, imagine how those uh, particular technologies and uh, uh, situations can allow us to rethink the the learning uh, experience itself and the dynamics of that of that experience the um, outcomes we're looking for, the way that we measure learning. Uh, I think there's, you know, there's just tremendous opportunities um, for um, playful learning, for example, for individual discovery. All of these um, uh, uh, kinds of goals that we've had in the past, but perhaps haven't been able to realize. You know, I'm I'm excited by the things you say because I've got a lot of pictures in my head about what they mean. Right. What about some concrete examples? You talk about playful learning. Well, I'll just give you an example from uh, my own um, experience. Uh, at this particular moment, uh, we're, for example, running a alternate reality game for our incoming class of freshmen. And, you know, uh, usually these uh, freshmen who are coming into um, where I work, which is the School of Cinematic Arts, um, are, you know, a little bit wary. They're, this is the first time a lot of them have been away from home. Um, uh, they're ambitious, so they're, you know, and they're competitive, uh, but maybe that means that they are, you know, not quite certain of their classmates. Um, what we've done is we've created a game where the students are prompted to immediately begin working in teams together um, and creating all different kinds of media, everything from uh, screenplays to photo essays to collages to board games to... Um, uh, uh, salons, uh, short films, uh, and to do this in uh, in teams uh, that they make up themselves, uh, and it's uh, what you see. What you see is kind of amazing. The it, the attitude of these students towards learning has um, changed so dramatically that from what we've what we see in the past, they are completely uh, taking on the responsibility uh, uh, and the sort of activation for their own learning uh, onto their own sh shoulders. Uh, it's kind of amazing, actually. We're <laughs> having a hard time keeping up with them. <laughs> so that's just an example. Uh, that's, I, would, I like to think that uh, the, the um, best thing we can do at this time in, in this, this uh, moment of what we call reimagining uh, media for learning is to come up with models and examples. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, we can learn from those. Um, there's not one particular game or one particular uh, kind of social network that's going to work in every situation. And so, uh, you know, it's really important that we as designers get a chance to um, try out, I think, uh, a lot of different possibilities. The, the interesting thing, I think, um, for something like this, this ARG is that um, it has a sort of built-in assessment um, of uh, the learning that's being achieved uh, in the actual uh, game. So, you know, we're able to see, um, you know, how, how many uh, other students that uh, are being collaborated with at any given time, um, what types of media uh, students are experimenting with. Uh, there, there are kinds of things that then a, an instructor, for example, uh, could have uh, knowledge of and then go in and, um, and work with students on. That's the, the beginning of an answer to a, a question that was coming to mind, which is, of course, at, at 
your institution, you, you have self-selected students who are already somewhat adept at the, at the media. The, I can imagine and, and would encourage you to come up with a little cookbook so that other teachers could do that as a kind of um, uh, break the ice activities for students. But there comes a point where students who are less adept need some instruction and coaching. So how does this peer-to-peer -peer kind of bottom-up, I guess bottom-up's not really the right word. I think peer-to-peer -peer is a better way to talk about it, uh, learning. How does that mesh with the instructor is the expert who's going to show people who are less expert how to do things? Well, first of all, I should say that, um, yeah, I, I don't really subscribe to the instructors, the expert. Uh, uh, so I, I guess I, you know, I come at that from a kind of orthogonal perspective. Um, uh, so but you, would, you would find one of the students who's really great at video editing and have them teach the other students? Is that what? Oh, yeah, that's an exercise I do in my classes. Actually, every semester we have what I call the skill sharing market. And day one, we go around and we say three things that every that each each person says three things that they know how to do, and um, then we have a discussion about um, uh, you know other things that students would like to learn, and then we actually the students go around and make deals with one another, and you have to find one person to learn a skill from and one person to teach a skill to, and uh, over the course of the semester, the students work together to learn and to teach their skills. Uh, you know, and, and, and one of the reasons I do this on day one is because, you know, I just tell them that, you know, the, it's too complex. Uh, uh, the, the kinds of things that, that you want to learn are too complex for any one person to hold the keys. Um, what you need to learn is how to learn from other people, how to find the people who have the, the knowledge and the skills that you, that you need and to seek them out and to, you know, uh, make relationships with them and to, you know, uh, find ways to, to learn from them. So, you know, that's just something that uh, for me, I guess, is a little bit in my DNA. Um, but I will say that, you know, uh, the, uh, the ARG is, you're right, for a self-selected group of people, but it's certainly um, types, other types of participatory um, situations could be built that allowed instructors to know when to intervene. And I think that's, um, you know, that's one of the really great things about this idea of, of imagining media situations um, uh, for today, because we can have a light touch in a sense. We can, we can create these social environments where the students are self-motivated, where they're driven by their own desires to, to figure things out and to learn. But then we're sort of kind of tracking what uh, they're able to do and perhaps what they're not able to do. Uh, and there can be a kind of a, a, a interventions where only where it's required because you don't really want to intervene when someone's already just challenging themselves and driving themselves, right? Uh, but intervening where uh, uh, perhaps uh, a slight, slight help could, could make all the difference, right? Um, there's actually an interesting game. I think you and I talked about this uh, not, uh, maybe uh, a while back, uh, a game called Collegeology that we're, we've been working on where um, it's a board game and students uh, go through the college process together and they kind of talk about the college process and, and their concerns about it as part of this, uh, this little board game. And what we find interesting is that that also surfaces a lot of peer knowledge um, about a subject that students are often kind of lockjaw when it comes to speaking about what their plans for college are. You know, they're often sort of, oh, I, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do in college? Nothing. You know, I don't know, right? But when you have a group of, of kids playing a game together, um, they're more apt to ask each other questions and answer each other's questions. Uh, so peer-to-peer -peer sharing is not always about just who has the knowledge, it's about creating an environment where it's okay to ask, right? It's, I think it, it goes a little farther than just who has the knowledge and who doesn't have the knowledge. Wonderful. You know, I can tell you're onto something when I'm, I'm making a note in the back of my mind to do this with my own students. So that's, <laughs> I hope a lot of that comes out of the DML uh, 2012 is that uh, a lot of ideas that, that people can adopt. Um, we'll, we'll begin filtering out from this really wonderful collection of, of learning mavens to everybody else who's interested in, in digital media and learning. So, 
So thanks. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the conference in, in San Francisco. Thank you. It'll be fun. Okay, bye. Take care.